And we're live! Hey everybody, welcome into the App Flippin' Hippos YouTube channel. Today is Wednesday, February 19th. <laughs> Let me double check myself. Y'all know that I never get dates and days, right? I absolutely rely on my technology for that. So welcome in everybody. I'm going to give it a couple minutes to let folks filter on in before we jump into the actual haul. Hi Jennifer, hi Ruth, hi John, welcome in guys, thanks for joining me today. Um, I'm trying to think if there's any news at the top of the hour I can share while we wait for some folks to get in, but I don't think there is anything. Um, I was live last night with special guest Megan Mawinney, who, if you guys don't know who Megan Mawinney is, first of all, she's a very good friend of mine, um, and it's always a treat to have her on, but... She's very knowledgeable about reselling and jeans specifically. So if you didn't catch the live show last night, if you had some time in, the, in your week this week, um, go back and watch the replay. There's a lot of good information in there. And we had a lot of fun too. Um, Megan and I tend to get a little silly when we're together, but um, in and around the silliness, there was a lot of really great knowledge dropped and um, so if you missed that, go back and watch the replay. Hi, Lucille. Welcome in. And Michelle. Um, turn to see if there's any other news. I'm still working on a free... Um, it's going to be like a mini... A mini bolo list of like the top 10 booty shorts brands to look for. I'm going to drop that probably towards the end of March in time for spring for you guys. Um, I'm also working on a jeans guide that's going to be very similar to my plush guide. Um, that one won't be free because it's going to be very much more extensive and big. It's going to be like the plush guide where I'm going to have FAQs and myths and how to measure and how to tell mid-rise from low-rise and boot cut from flare. So it'll have a lot of information in there. Um, because it's going to be so extensive, that one might not come out until April. Um, but the free one will drop next month. And then, um... We're going to run some specials and some deals inside of the group on our guides for our members. So if you're not in the group, it's Flippin' Hipples, Re Flippin' Hipples, Flippin' Hipples, Flippin' Hipples Reseller Pod on Facebook. There's a link in the box below, or you can just search for it. Uh, make sure you read the rules before you join, especially uh, rule number one is don't be a turd. The group is a really nice place right now full of very positive people. I don't want turds in there. And then most important, the other most important rule, I don't remember which number it is, but no sharing of outside links unless you specifically have permission from myself or one of the other admin, um, or it's in a specified thread. And we do theme threads all week, which gives everybody the opportunity to share their Instagrams, their Poshmarks. We have a Pinterest um, sharing thread that's run by one of our members, Sherry, and um, we have a Poshmark sharing day. So there's plenty of opportunities in there to share your stuff um, within the theme threads just so that the group doesn't run amok with just people posting threads or links. Hi Lucille. I already said hi to you. Sorry. I'm going double, to double down on the highs. Hi twice. Hi Tammy. Danny's in the house. Um, Danny's waiting for Bill and Dave to check out a thrift store number two. For your all-day thrift a -thon. It sounds much more exciting than the day I'm having. Mine is just run-of-the-mill working. All right, so uh, Keith and I are being very cherry-picky as far as sourcing. Um, I still have my box of I Don't Want Us, the plush that I need to test. So they're still here. If I um, run out of inventory, that is an option for me. To go through there. Um, I still have the pile of jackets. They're behind the hippos. <coughs> Excuse me. After we finally got through all of our death piles. I still had a pile of coats and jackets. And I still haven't done them. I think they've become an I don't wanna. They're all very heavy and very long. They're going to be a pain. Probably literally to get photographed. So I'm just kind of avoiding them. I think I'm going to try to work on them this weekend when I have Keith here for his help. 
um, because he has a normal person back and he can help. <coughs> Excuse me. So sorry. Keep hacking. Um, so I have like things I could be doing. So I basically have an, I don't want a pile of long, they're like all trench coat length jackets and coats. And then the box of plush that he tested. And then I had also gotten a box from thread up last week. Um, 27 pairs of jeans were in there. If you didn't see that video, that thread up box was the best box ever in the history of thread up. I had absolutely zero pairs of poop and like nine pairs of, um, what I call money jeans, the bolos, the, the heavy hitters. It was a great box. So because of that, we're still being very cherry picky when we go out sourcing. We also don't really want to build up another huge pile or another death pile since it took five months to get through what we had. I don't want to build up another one. Um, if It would be a different story if it was fall, if we were going into the winter. Yeah, build up if you live in a place like where we live because you can get days where you can't get out to source because of snow, icy roads, etc. Inclement weather. Um, but we're getting into spring soon. So we only got 30 items. And this was us being cherry picky. And cherry picky is a word. I know I've told you guys that before. I don't care what anyone says is a word. Cherry picky. Um, thanks, Dan. This is my uh, one of them. I have a ton of Harley Dav Harley Davidson. Jeez, Harley Quinn shirts. They were this one was ninety nine cents at the Goodwill. Um, Tammy says I understand about the coats and jackets. So yeah, I mean you guys know what our photo setup is behind me. Um, we have a table with a box on top of it, and that's what we put the can you see them the mannequins on. So I'd ha I'm gonna have to pull the table and the box out, which isn't that big of a deal. But then the coats are gonna have to go on hangers and hang on that hook you can see up there. And they're heavy, and that hook is over my head, so it's really hard for me to reach. Um, I'm just avoiding it. I don't I don't think it's gonna be a fun day. So. Hopefully I can get Keith to help me this weekend. My goal, honestly, y'all, is to get through the coach this weekend and that box of plush and get all of that stuff photographed so I have tons of extra photos um, Monday morning going into the week. I can be listing more because I'll have more photos already ahead of time prepped for me. So, hi, Megan. So we got 30 items at the Goodwill. We went to one Goodwill. We cherry picked. We got 30 items. I believe like 17 or 19 maybe. Or plush. We'll see. And we spent a total of $37.66 for an average of $1.25 per item. So we're going to start with the plush. Because they're my favorite. I always got to start with the plush. Um, this is a platypus. <laughs> I knew his name yesterday. Um, oh my gosh, he's from a, a Nickelodeon show, right? And I've sold him before. I've sold many different versions of him. Sometimes he has a hat on his head. Um, and I'm totally, I knew who he was when I got him and I knew who he was yesterday. Anyway, he's supposed to talk. He does not anymore. And he doesn't have an opening. So with plush, sometimes the electric ones, the, like, le, le, the electronic ones and the talking ones, most of the time they're going to have some kind of opening. You can get in and change the batteries out and test them. And a lot of times they don't. They're just talking animals with no opening. And so if they don't work anymore, you just disclose it. And um, I sell a lot of plush that don't work anymore. And I just disclose it and knock a couple bucks off. I sell them all the time. Um, Perry Platypus. Thank you. He's cute. I think platypuses are cute. They're like a beaver and a duck hybrid. This is um, one of the bedtime care bears. I already have one listed in my store. So, I mean, I've forgotten her name. But I'll just look at, look at my own listings. There's a blue one that's a boy, and this pink one's a girl, and they have a little diaper. Um, I already have one of each, actually, in the store. And I've already sold the blue one before. So I grabbed these. Oh, and by the way, 50 cents and 50 cents. 
So all the plush I'm about to show you were all 50 cents plush. This is Flippin' Flamingos. Hi. Uh, yeah, Perry the Platypus from Phineas and Ferb. This is from Disney Junior from Doc McStuffin. Char I don't know the actual character, but I do know what show she's from. Um, there's a hippo from this show that I have that Bill and David gave me, actually. Um, but yeah, that's one of those characters, and so she was 50 cents. And we have a Beanie Boo, a Beanie Buddy. Not a Beanie Boo. Beanie Boo? Beanie Buddy. It's a Beanie Boo. Beanie Boo. This is Glamour. So this is one of the kind of larger ones. Most of the Beanie Boos that I get are the little six inchers. This one has glitter eyes. I've sold the tinier one of this one for like 12 or 13. So I'm happy to have the larger one for 50 cents. Yes, I said she's from Doc McStuffins. I just don't know who she is. Um, that one's mine. I got myself two plushies because I'm a child. This is um, Animal Adventure. I do okay with these, these Animal Adventures. I'll pick them up if I find them for like 50 cents or a quarter or whatever. They're like pretty staple bread and butter plushies. And this one's really super cute. It's a little pink and white dog. Hi. Henrietta does not need a tattoo. She's over here. She's uh, working. She's listing. Um, all right. We have Penelope. This is a beanie boo. She's got glitter eyes, or he, and a sparkle to me. I always pick up the beanie buddies when they're 50 cents. Most times they're going to sell between 10 and 14 bucks depending on the character. Having the glitter eyes, um, you can add a couple bucks on, on the price. The glitter eyes are more desirable. Um, and then sometimes you're pleasantly surprised and I'll get them home and I've got one that'll go for 18, 20, 25. Um, so I don't comp them if they're 50 cents. I just bring them all home and figure it out from there. Um, okay, I'll show you the ones I got for myself real quick. So these are all not listed or photographed yet. All of the ones that you just saw had to get a bath. So they were sprayed down with Awesome um, on their problem areas. And then they went through the wash and air dried. No dryer. So those will be photographed maybe over the weekend when I do the other plush out of that box. Um, I'm probably going to keep both of these for myself. So you guys know, obviously, I love hippos. Hippos are the best. And they're super cute. And they're great. And they're our mascots and our employees um, but I also my favorite pet or my favorite animal period is a rodent I love all rodents I've had pet mice rats hamsters gerbils I really want a chinchilla anyway I have a pet hamster right now most of you are familiar with Emmy her full name is MC hamster but we call her Emmy and I just love hamsters and rodents and I saw this one <laughs> like he's so cute his name's honey this is honey. I'll probably keep this for myself just because it's cute. And then I found a little guinea pig. Um, I don't think it has a name. It just says that it's a guinea pig. And it has a little hat. And so I, ha I could have two rodent friends on my desk next to. I have a couple hippos over there. And if you guys remember that real tiny beanie boo I found in Florida. I don't know if you remember her or not. I showed her on a live haul when we were at Casey's house. Casey the Rockstar Flipper, if you don't know who Casey is. Um, it's a little unicorn with purple eyes, and her name is Star. So I think these are going to live on my desk. Or maybe I'll sell them in a lot together. I don't know. They're cute. I love rodents. I love rodents. All right, so all of the ones I'm about to show you now are already listed. So I have them separated by... Um, because I have to put them in their proper locations after the show. So I have them um, in bags of where they go. <laughs> what locations. Alright. So this is Fluttershy. She is a Thai sparkle pony. 
And she's a little bit bigger. Um, I usually, when I find the Thai Sparkle Ponies, they're like the smaller six inch ones. Those ones I get 13 and 14 for on the regular, depending on the character. Sometimes it's a little more, a little bit less. You can also lot them up and sell them in lots. Um, I like playing with their hair. <laughs> Such a girl. Um, so she's got the butterflies. She's got the sparkle hair. Can you see the sparkles? So she's a little bit bigger. So um, I don't even know that I'm going to comp her. I might just throw her up for 15 or 16 because that's what I want for her. So we'll just put her right there. Then we have Timon. You can be a big pig too. Oi! Um, he is official. So everything I'm showing you still was 50 cents. Everything I've showed you thus far and I'm showing you now, 50 cents each. This is a tie as well. These little tie balls, they're okay. Um, I would tell you guys not to pick them up unless you find them for a quarter, 50 cents. And they're a recognizable pop culture character. Because even the turtles like this. Um, this is Leonardo. Um, I've had turtles, Iron Man, the Incredible Hulk. I think I had Captain America before. Um, and some other recognizable characters. They'll go for like 10 to 12 bucks. So they're not like anything spectacular. But um, some of the characters go pretty fast. And if you're paying a quarter or 50 cents, it's a pretty good return on investment. You guys hear Elmo? He's sleepy. He um, has his cute little goldfish pajamas on. And I still remember Elmo's song. Crazy. So my oldest son is 18. And he was obsessed with Elmo when he was a toddler. I still remember the song. Goldfish 2. Goldfish is on the pajamas. There's no way to turn it off, so it's going to continue to play. I found a Webkins. You guys know how I feel about these. These are kind of like the Beanie Boos. Um, I just grab all of them that I find if they're cheap enough. Get them home. Most are just run-of-the-mill um, 10 to 18, depending if they have a code or not. And some are more. I've had Webkins. I think I've said this before. I've had Webkins without a code that sold for 20 plus dollars. And I've had some with codes that only sold for 10 or 12. Um, this is a rainbow hedgehog. <laughs> I thought it was super cute. And then we have Olaf. This is also a tie. And it had its nice tag and everything. So I can't remember exactly what I put mine up for. But I did price mine a little bit higher than most. Because mine was one of the few that had the, the hang tag. So keep that in mind when you're comping your plush. Or pricing them. Um, having the original hang tag in really good condition on any plush. Not just tie or whatever. You can add. It adds value. So you can add a couple bucks or whatnot. If you're missing the tag and everybody else has this tag. You're the only one without. You want to price a little bit lower if you only have the tush tag, which is that. Um, and, you know, look at other people's pictures, too. I know a lot of people price their plush really, really low. But if you actually look at their listings, um, I'd say probably 95% and maybe even more of plush listings are horrible pictures. There are people taking pictures of plush on floors, couches, in the dark. There's no light. They're not professional. They don't look good. They often don't have a photo of the animal next to a yardstick or a measuring tape. They don't have, you know, best offer on or free shipping. There's a lot of reasons why you can charge more for your plush than other people do. Um, and I price really high because I have the professional white background. My pictures look great and I do all the best practices. I know what I'm doing when it comes to keywords in the title. Um, so I price higher because I can. So pay attention to all of that too. Oh, Disney plush for 15 cents. That's so cool. Hi Pete. You can't blame Casey because I'm going to call him later and tell him you made someone late to my show. <laughs> You're going to get him in trouble. 
All right, so this guy I paid $2.99. And I actually, I want to say I put him up for $40, but he may be up for $50. So I'm going to have a peek. Um, I actually want to tell you what he's up for. Bear and Stain Bear. Okay, so he's up for $40 with free shipping and best offer. And this is the Berenstain Bears Papa Bear from 1995. So I did pay $2.99 for him. I was very happy to pay $2.99 for him. I would have loved for him to have been in the 50 cents pile, but he was not. But he has a $40 plush, so he was worth the extra money. And I got one more that I paid paid up for. I paid $1.99 for this one. Um, I want to see what this is up for too. I list 10 to 20 items a day and I do a lot of different men's shirts, plush, jeans, all that stuff. So if you're wondering like why can't she remember what she put that up for? Because I list like 20 things a day. <laughs> uh, this one is up for 30 with um, best offer and should not, it has free shipping on it, but I don't think it should. So I'll have to fix that. Has anybody else noticed that lately? Sometimes I'll put stuff up with um, calculated shipping and then I'll go back in and look at them and it's free and it's like, no, that weighs over a pound. I would never put free shipping on that. So I'll fix it. But anyway, what did I say? This one's up for 40, 30. Now I've already forgotten. Elephant 30 and I think it should have shipping on it because it's heavy anyway it is an elephant with her baby how cute is that I cannot stand I would have paid $2.99 for this too to be honest but it was $1.99 but look at the baby isn't that the cutest thing you've ever seen? She's holding them in her trunk. It's so cute. And it's Animal Planet. So cute. And soft. And big. I like this elephant. Okay, I'll have to remember to fix her shipping. Um, when I looked her up, her name is Mommy Wrinkle. And the baby is Baby Sprinkle. So they must be like either, I'm not sure where they can't just found their names. So it's probably popular or famous from um, the Animal Planet channel or maybe from a zoo somewhere. But it's Mommy, Mommy Wrinkle and Baby Sprinkle. <laughs> How cute, Wrinkle and Sprinkle. Okay, and I got one more plush. Um, this one I actually need to test and I need to cut this string off because it'll drive me insane. I am very open and admitting I have OCD to you guys all the time and I can't stand strings and stuff. Um, so he's electronic and he opens up. So he's going to go in that box over there and hopefully get taken care of over the weekend because I'm going to have to test him. I took a risk. Look at his hair. <laughs> I took the risk because he was only 50 cents. So, you know, if he doesn't work, I'll have to sell him, um, you know, a little bit cheaper.
Dun, 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 dun. Sound is back. No, I'm not streaming. Now I have no camera. I may have to end this and restart. Um. We'll see if I can fix this, but if not, I'm going to have to just end the whole video. It was not going to work. And we have sound and we have camera. Okay. Hey guys. <laughs> Um, so now we have camera and the sound. Um, I don't know what in the heck happened there. Um, I have no idea. Like, I knew how to fix it, but I don't know how it happens. So the third-party service I use is OBS, and you have to stream it to YouTube. And then, um, it just dropped my microphone. So, like, what I first did was just unplug it, in case you wonder what I was doing. I unplugged it and plugged it back in a few times to see if I could get the computer to recognize it, and it wasn't, so I double-checked the settings on OBS, and it said I didn't have a microphone. Um, so I had to um, basically tell it to uninstall and reinstall the audio, which then knocked the camera out somehow, and now it's telling me I don't have a camera. So anyway, all is good. Everyone is still here. I apologize for that. Um, Technology is wonderful when it works. Um, so, on my end, I'm holding scissors and talking. Um, on my end, it looks like you guys have sound and video again. So, um, let's hope so. Um, that is just weird. Like, it just decided in the middle of recording this video or streaming this video, it just decided. Hey, you know that microphone that you said you have? You don't have it anymore. And um, now you don't have a camera. Anyway. Sorry, guys. Um, normally, it's user error. And I laugh at myself and tell you guys, oh, I'm an amateur and I have no business on, on in, in, uh, YouTube. But this was not user error. This was a really weird um, technological error. So anyway, I hope you all can hear and see me. And um, I was talking about him, I guess, when the sound dropped out. He's electronic. He was 50 cents. He's from 1995. I have to test him to see if he works to sell him. All right. So let's go into the clothing. It's mostly jeans. Nothing too exciting, but some really unique and um, cool kind of prints and stuff I found. So... These are Chico's So Slimming. You guys know I love Chico's So Slimming and So Lifting. And um, they have vanity sizes. So you have to be sure to go to the Chico's website and check the sizing to see what it actually equates to in a, in a regular U.S. standard size. And I do have a video on the channel that tells you how to deal with Chico's sizes as far as what to put in your title and your description and your... Um, item specifics and how to get the chart and all that. So you can search the channel for that if you ever have Chico's. It's like a five minute video. It's really short. It'll help you out. So these are So Slimming green jeans. And oh, sorry. They were 99 cents. <laughs> I got I get discombobulated when stuff happens, but I'll get back in the groove. So that's red. So red was the color of the week, which was 99 cents. These, um, I'm going to say to last because I did pay up for these. Uh, these are Not Your Daughter's Jeans. Red. So they were 99 cents. Um, they're size 4. But they're Not Your Daughter's Jeans. And they're black. Why do they look, they look like they have a print on them, like a very faint print. Do you see it? 
but they were 99 cents. And these are cute. These are um, Gap, 99 cents. I always grab Gap, it's a really good bread and butter brand, I love it. These are a size 32, which is a great, great size. And they're super unique. They got these uh, palm fronds. Palm fronds. That's a word. Weird word. To, weird thing to <laughs> Palm fronds. Hi, Megan. Welcome in. Um, You're a little late, but we had some technical difficulty when um, I lost my sound in my camera for a minute. So you missed just the plush and then the black screen with no sound. <laughs> Uh, so I've shown Chico so lifting and a not your daughter's jeans so far in these and uh, These are gap size 32. I Thought these were cool. I would I would grab gap plain, but it's even better when you find neat ones More not your daughter's jeans These ones were also 99 cents and Size 14, so they're a good size. But again, not your daughter's jeans. I'll grab in any size. They're definitely a bread and butter. Especially for 99 cents. These are, okay, so this is a brand I normally would stay away from. Uh, it's a heritage, but it is a size 14. And um, red tag means 99 cents. But... They're purple, and you really can't tell in here because I can see that they look blue to you guys in this lighting. Uh, but I guarantee, I I promise you, these are like a royal purple. So under the photo photograph lights, they'll look correct. Um, yeah, they're they're really pretty, pretty, pretty royal purple, and I have done well with purple jeans in the past. Any brand it. Out of all the colors and the prints I find, um, striped ones do really well, and purple seems to go really fast too. Um, so even though they're heritage, they were they're a good size. They're pretty. Um, yes, Gap is wonderful. They always give you their numbers, their color, their wash. They give you lots of info. They tell you what their jeans are. They basically are like, here guys, here's all the keywords you should have in your title, right on the tag and on the inner waistband. Um, what style do I think sells best for Not Your Daughter's Jeans? Um, I kind of feel like one doesn't stand out to me. I feel like any of them I buy and list, they all are pretty long tail. They take a little while to sell. As far as sizes, the larger sizes usually sell faster and for more money. But I don't, I can't think of one specific style that goes faster or for more money for me personally. Um, not your daughter's jeans has unfortunately become very run of the mill bread and butter. Um. Why did I get these? No clue. Okay, so these were 99 cents. There's the brand. I know why I got them. Check out these pant legs. It looks like snake skin. Snake skin print. I've always done well with animal prints. You'd think in 2020 the world would be over animal prints and we'd be done with them but we're not people still like them including cheetah and leopard okay so y'all i got a pair of these in the thread up box once long ago and far away i just found a rip in these which means i'll have to mark them down but that's okay so that's okay. I paid six ninety. Or these aren't jeans. What is the full price of pants? Five ninety nine. So five ninety nine full price. They're not jeans. They're five ninety nine for pants, I believe. And they have a rip, and I'm fine with that. 
So I got a pair of these one time in a thread up box. I had no idea what they were or what I had. And I got a lot of response from you guys because you are all so awesome. They're like uniform work pants for like paramedics and other types of jobs. And mine sold for, I want to say like 40 bucks. So I took a risk. Megan likes the skinny by Not Your Daughter's Jeans. I kind of, I kind of feel like Not Your Daughter's Jeans is just anymore. Like many things that have been run down to the bottom. Um, these are ninety nine cents. Now this is a one that I can actually tell you for sure. This is J Crew. Um, they have the toothpick, the matchstick, and the hip slung. They have other ones. J. Crew is one I can definitely tell you. These hip slungs, the matchstick, and the toothpick, I do really well with on Poshmark. I do okay on eBay. Not bad. They're good. They're long tail. They'll sit for a while. But there's just J. Crew is still really big on Poshmark. It's part of their um, preppy party they have where people share their preppy brands that are popular. Um, and people on there just really like their J. Crew. And the hip slung toothpick and matchstick are the three I do the best with. Alright. Got some more wild pants. What was that? I don't know. See these? Aren't they pretty? I mean, I don't know that I would wear these myself, but they're definitely different and pretty. So this is a brand I normally would ignore. These are Bristol Capri. They're also Capris. We talked about Capris last night with Megan. But, and they're a size 8, which isn't that great. But, they were 99 cents. You can see it by the red. And they were unique enough that I'm going to try it. And we're coming into spring, so maybe the Capris will be good. Right? Oh! I know what that was. So they were new with tags, but I wanted them to go through the wash anyway because I didn't want to steam clean them. And the tag they came with was like a ribbon, so I guess Keith took that off and threw it in the bag for me. Okay, so I've got two shirts and one pair of jeans to show you guys, and then we're through the whole haul because, like I said, we did not um, get very much. We got the 30 items. And most of it was plush. I think um, I could tell you. I could look at the receipt and tell you. She put in 15 of the 50 cent plush. And then I paid full price for two. So 17 of this was plush. So there was only like 13 clothing items. Yeah, I thought they were super cool, Megan. I was like, these are neat. I guess I'm going to save the best jeans for last. So, again, this is just run-of-the-mill bread and butter. This is one of the brands that Keith looks for in the men's shirts. This is an extra large, Columbia. This one has long sleeves. It's a nice plaid. Green and blue. Button front shirt. The um, matchsticks are just, like, super skinny. And I think that's why people like them. Because the, the skinny... From what I understand from the kids these days, skinny jeans are all the rage. Not for me. I still like flare and bell bottom, but Megan says I think I'm calm. No, never. Never comment too much, especially when you're knowledgeable about what you're commenting about. That's great. Adding to the no, the teaching and the adding to the teachable moments of the haul video. Um, you can go back and watch the replay. And I also, by the way, guys, I did manage to go back into the replay from last night. And I did put Megan's YouTube, Instagram, and her eBay store. What is this? In there for you guys. This is not hair done by my new hair dryer that me and Megan were talking about. This is dry shampoo and InStyler. <laughs> Girl talk! All right. I think Keith, I'm, try, I'm still trying to figure out why Keith got this as I'm talking to you guys and filling the silence. I'm inspecting this wondering like, why. 
because um, if you're not aware, most of you already are, we purchased 3,000 remotes a couple months back in a bulk wholesale order and Keith has been listing those and that is all he lists anymore as he works on the remotes, which is fine. And so now um, I list the men's shirts, which used to be Keith's um, task. We dole out tasks. But now I do all the clothing and everything so he can focus on the remotes. But he still sources the men's shirts while I look through jeans and plush. And I'm like, why? I don't know what to do with this. But anyway, I have this shirt and one pair of jeans. And then I'm going to call it a, um, let you guys go before before we hit the hour but if you guys have questions you can put them in the chat and I'll take the time to answer them and then if we go the full hour that's fine I don't mind sticking around to answer questions okay so this is a large and it's by smash but I'm assuming Keith just got it because it's super cool looking it's a nice Hawaiian shirt it's button front it's got flowers I don't know I think it's ugly somebody will like it you guys know the ugly cells, right? Ugly cells. I'm trying to figure out what it's made out of. Because it's real, it's cotton, 100%. It's like a really nice lightweight thin shirt, I guess, for summer. Anyway, so yeah, Keith only picked out two shirts. That's how cherry picky he's being and or how bad the pickings order our thrift store Sunday. Oh, I did not link the hairbrush, Megan. I forgot. I'll have to do that. I think I have. I'll do that. So there's this Revlon Oval Hair Dryer Brush, ladies. Or men, if you like to have a nice blow and blow your hair. I was looking at it for like a year and contemplating it. And I really couldn't pull the trigger on a $60 thing. But it's a hairbrush and a blow dryer all in one. So you can do everything. But, um... Right around Christmas, it was part of the deal of the day, and it was like on sale for like 30 or something on Amazon. So I did an affiliate link in my Facebook group sharing that, and everyone went crazy, and a bunch of people bought it, and now everyone is totally happy and recommending it to their, everyone loves it. Everyone who got it, that bought it from that link or had it prior to that and was sharing their experiences with us has loved it. And I know a bunch of people that bought it, then got it for their friends. Um, it's amazing. I'll put the link somewhere. Maybe in the Facebook group. Maybe on both videos. Um, but it's it's a really... I'm not a beauty blogger and this is supposed to be a reselling channel. But it is a really amazing um, two-in-one tool that cuts your time in the bathroom down. And time is money. So if you can do a nice blow dry without the brush and the hair dryer with one tool. And it takes you like 5-10 minutes at the most. Then you could take pictures and list and spend less time in the bathroom in front of the mirror. It's an amazing product. Hey, Maureen, welcome in. Um, <laughs> Megan says people love that Revlon dryer, and <laughs> she works at Ulta. It is the most amazing thing I've ever had. It's the best hair tool I've ever had, and I have an end styler, which Hair 2-4 was my favorite. End stylers are the bomb, um, but that Revlon tool. Although my arm does get tired, but hey, I need the workout, right? Okay, so... That said, throw your questions in the chat if you have any. can be about anything you've seen in this haul, plus jeans, reselling in general, eBay, Posh, what I had for lunch, whatever. <laughs> Ask me anything. Um, and this will be the last thing I show you. I paid $6.99 for these. It's the ultimate mompreneur tool, yes. They're button fly. I just know that everyone that bought it is absolutely in love with it and happy, so. Um, I showed you the button fly. So I'm going to show you the jeans. They're men's. They are pretty darn big. They are. These are jeans. And <laughs> they're big. What are they? They're 40 by 34. So that is a good size. They're Ed Hardy jeans. I love Ed Hardy jeans. There's a lot of people that don't like these and will not source them or resell them. And that's fine because then there's less competition for me. I do well with them. 
Look at those pockets. I do really well with them. They're long tail. Because I'll list them for like 60 bucks and I'll sit and wait. And I usually get about 50 to 55 on the best offer. And sometimes I get the whole 60 on Poshmark. Um, but they are very long tail. Just like I think with any designer brand or very expensive clothing, they're going to be a little more long tail because the average American doesn't have $60 to spend on a pair of jeans. The average American goes online on Poshmark and eBay to find good deals on used clothing. So they're looking for the $25 Gap jeans and the $25 Old Navy jeans and maybe the $30 Lucky brands. But they're not, you know, the average American probably isn't looking to spend that much money. So you are waiting for the person who is willing to spend uh, $60 on a pair of jeans. And those people are few and far between. So any clothing you have that is expensive is going to take longer to sell and you're going to have to wait. You're going to have to be patient and you're going to have to wait three to six months for that person to come along. They will come. Clothes are slow. They're long tail. You must be patient. Um, but yeah, most of the folks that are coming online looking for the $60 jeans are the people that really like a certain brand. Miss Me, Rock Revival, True Religion, Silver, Ed Hardy. And they know that if they go buy them new, they're spending upwards of $150 to $200. So they're willing to spend, you know, a little less than half of that on used on eBay. But those people are not as common or as shopping as often as the folks looking for the deals make sense so these are Ed Hardy look at these nice skulls and they're a big size so I'm super excited about this um, strawberry lemonade found the brush yes it's a great brush so I will be putting um, I have to tell you legally it's an affiliate link so I'll be putting another link to the brush probably in the Facebook group today and then I'll try to put it on this video and Megan's video and I get like a small commission if you use the affiliate link but it does help support the channel and what we do here John says star what did you have for lunch I had a bowl of homemade chicken noodle soup that I made myself and I believe if you're so inclined I think the chicken noodle soup may be one of the recipes I have I have a playlist called Hungry Hippo for those of you that are new to the channel where I share crock pot recipes and hacks and tricks and budget tips for the kitchen. Um, I believe the homemade chicken noodle soup is in there and it was delicious. It was the very last of what I didn't freeze because I make a big pot and then I freeze half for later meals. And then Keith and I will usually eat it, you know, two nights or so and then I eat the rest for lunch. So I had that with a couple of saltines. Black jeans have gotten faded out. Do you still just list color as black? So I list the colors black. I'll put black in the title. I'll put black in the uh, item specifics and black in the description box. And then I'll just notate right there that it's a little bit faded. Um, yeah, according to eBay, 70% of jeans sell for less than $20. Um, and I don't sell that many for under that unless it's something I have shipping on. So, I guess we're, we're the last brave warriors, Megan, that price our stuff. <laughs> uh, true religion jeans, typically. If they're just true religion, I will start around 50, 55. Um, if they have damage or flaw, maybe 45. Um, if they're a bigger size, 60. Men's, I usually start around 65 maybe 70, depending on how big they are for men. But generally speak, speaking, most run of the mills, true religions, I do start at 50 on eBay. I expect to take a best offer of 40 or 45. Um, and I will start them around 60 on Poshmark, expecting to sell them for around 40 or 45, because I do bigger discounts on Poshmark, plus they pay shipping, so. That's the true religions. Um, Megan and I talked about this last night, so I'll just briefly reiter reiterate it to you guys right now. Mm, generally speaking, when it comes to plush and jeans, I don't comp anymore. Um, I typically sell the same bread and butter type jeans over and over again, and I know in my head what my starting point is, and I go up or down from there, depending. Down for flaws, up for size, or special prints like those gap jeans 
that were all special. I'm probably going to list those for like 27. Most gap I start around 22, but those are special. So I just have like a price in my head for most of the jeans. Um, no, for all of the jeans that I list on a regular basis that I consistently find. If it's new to me, I will comp them and I put that loosely in quotes because I'll kind of glance at comps and then be like, you guys are out of your minds. <laughs> You're all after fast nickels. And then I'll check Megan's store and see what she's doing. Um, and then plush, I usually just price it when I want. I know, I know what most of the plush is worth and if I don't and I have to comp it, it's again very loosely like, okay, and then I'll check Robert's store and see what he's doing. <clears throat> yeah I agree absolutely with Megan she says um, statistic means that people are just looking for cheap stuff and she doesn't want cheap buyers anyways who want the nice stuff for pennies um, hey Robert speaking of the devil I just spoke your name and you appeared everybody zombie bargain hunter that's Robert he also sells a lot of plush. Um, I kind of find that I have the most returns and or problem buyers on the less expensive items. So I think that's a common theme of her lottery sellers say, like the cheaper stuff. And it may, it may just be because people who are buying stuff for, for um, lower prices don't have as much money to spend so their money is more important to them so they're more picky that's me being nice and politically correct but i don't know uh precious bunny i was listing a whole bunch of rock and roll cowgirl jeans the other day and they're 25 to 7 inches but in the specifics only gave me options to put whole sizes so you need to put on the item specifics you need to put the actual size of the pants that's on the tag and then in the description box you would put both so for these ad hardy jeans that i just showed you guys they say they're 40 by 34 right so in the title i would put size 40 by 34 and then in the item description i would put 40 and 34 in the specifics in the description box i would put this under size and then I would put the actual waist in inches and the actual inseam in inches, if it's different. If it's the same, I would too. Oh, geez, Christy. A $4 video game? I, <laughs> I'm petty. Welcome to Pettyville. Oh, for something like that, I would probably just take the item down and be like, now nobody's getting it because I wouldn't want to deal with it. Um... Yeah, Robert says $10 to $15 games are more returns than other items. It, it, I hate to be stereotypical of, you know, any certain type of people or make judgment calls on, um, I can't think of the word I want. It's not economical, but uh, I just not trying to make any judgment calls on anybody based on, you know, their... Oh, I almost had the word. I almost had it. Whatever. But it does seem that statistically it's been proven when I speak to other resellers that the cheaper the item, the more problems you're going to probably have. Um, it just is. And then on the other end of the spectrum, when you get too high, you're going to have some problems too. Um, really high. Like luxury, luxury brands that people are going to buy from you and then try to claim they're fake so they can get half their money back and stuff like that. It's unfortunate, um, you know, I like to think that in general most humans are good, but that's probably not true. <laughs> uh, there's turds, there's bad apples, there's poop. You're always going to have to deal, you know, if you're a reseller online and you sell more than a couple items a day, you're eventually going to run into those people because they're, they're there, they exist. And it's unfortunate, but it is part of our business and our job that we all have to deal with sometimes the poop people and just think back like I, I used to work in customer service for a little while when I took a break from the medical field and I just think back to like the people that would just be come up to customer service and just be so nasty and the way they would talk to employees it's not just online it's not even just when you're working 
Think about when you go to the grocery store when you're driving or when you try to park. People are turds and they treat people like crap. It just happens, but... Um... Oh, well, if he already bought it, then you can tell him he can return it for a full refund or he can keep it and tell him it's eBay policy not to um, refund without a return and just leave it at that. Like, you don't really need, even shouldn't be going back and forth with him. With people like that, you can legit send them one cookie cutter message and just say, you can, if you're not happy with it, return it for a full refund per eBay policy, period. And then... You don't have to deal with them anymore. And you can block them. Uncle Beast old school flips is in the house. Alright guys. That was all 30 items. And I kept you a little bit later talking. So. Um, the poop people. <laughs> DM that. The poop people. Those are the people that buy the poop jeans. On eBay for little bits of money. But anyway. I'm going to let you guys go. Thank you for joining me today. And um, seeing my haul. Which was teeny tiny and mostly plush but mostly plush is always always good and I still have to decide if I'm keeping my two new little friends <laughs> or selling them but they're little hamsters I love them all right guys go um before you leave hit the thumbs up it really really helps the channel out a lot more than you um probably realize it seems like such a small thing but hitting that thumbs up helps the algorithm helps this video get seen and helps people subscribe to the channel um and speaking of if you haven't subscribed please do and help us feed a hungry hippo join our facebook group flipping hippos reseller pod um and once this goes up for the replay, I will, if you're watching the replay later, I'll go ahead and have our live show from last night with Megan pop up for you guys. And um, I will try to get that hair dryer affiliate link in there for you, and I'll put it in the, in the group. So make sure you're in the group. Email us at flippinhipposhelp at gmail.com. Find us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at flippinhippos on all social media. Go be productive. Go make some money. And as always, thank you so, so much for watching. You guys are the best. Bye.